Welcome back, Warriors, to another Apex Legends video. Warlock here. Today, we're going to be going over my season for pro console settings. Let's get right into it. Welcome back, guys. So today, we're going to be going over my console pro settings. These are going to work both for PS4 and Xbox 360. I play on PS4. I made some changes to my settings that I did back in my video for Season 3. Uh, we made a big switch back from PC playing in the ALGS. So these are going to be my console settings that have been adjusted since playing on PC. But just as a reminder, guys... I do stream every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on Twitch. If you have any questions about this video and want to chill, join me over there. Link's going to be down in the description below. So, <clears throat> getting right into gameplay. This is probably the, you know, one of the more questioned or asked about things when it comes to my settings. So, a lot of these you shouldn't have changed from Season 3, Season 2, or even from the default settings. So, Impact, Prompt Style, Compact. You don't need it on default unless you have an issue and need to squint onto the game <clears throat> to see items on the floor. Button hints. Turn them on. You can. Uh, you can turn them off if you have issues and forget like, oh, I need to press square to do this to pick up or triangle to do that. You know, you can have those on. I leave mine on. I think it's just cool. Another interaction on the HUD. So crosshair damage feedback, I do both with the shield X on or with the shield icon and XW. So uh, you can do the crosshair and shield. I like to have both. So this is this means that if you shoot your target when you're dealing damage, it pops the shield up. So I like to have that on so I can indicate what my teammates or what my enemies have. Damage numbers. So now this is important and we're going to be talking about this also in another video. <clears throat> Put your damage numbers on stacking. Okay. Floating is cool. I tried floating, but stacking is where you want to be because when you make call outs for your teammates like, oh, I shot Wraith 64 purple, you know, or, you know, did 98 damage to her. You see the actual total number. If you have it on floating and, you're, and you have a weapon that deals 11 points of damage per shot, all it's going to do is put 11 damage and, you know, float, 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 float. So you're not going to be able to see the total number. Put it on stacking. This is going to help you out immensely. Ping opacity, default, you can have it on faded if you want, if you want it to go away. I'll leave mine on default, so it just kind of sits there. Um, but faded goes away after a while, but um, or it's a little bit more transparent, but I'll leave mine on default. Obituaries, leave them on. I like to see who I kill, <clears throat> especially if I have friends in the lobby or people that I know that play the game. I like to see their names in the lobby. So I have that on. That's a little fun. Mini map rotation. This is for when... <clears throat> You know, if you're facing north and you go west, it, the map's going to rotate with you. I leave mine off so it's all the same thing, so that way you can make callouts for certain maps. Um, I have tried this with this on. It just didn't work. It kind of made the callouts a little bit, you know, uh, wonky, so I keep the mini-map rotation off. Auto weapon cycle, turn this on. When you run out of ammo, your weapon automatically swaps to your secondary weapon. Leave this on. This will help you out in a lot of gunfights, especially in close quarters. Auto sprint off. There's no reason to have this um, unless you have issues with your game um, or your not your game, but your controller. If you have issues with your controller on, on pressing the L button down or you wore that out, uh, then you can turn it on. But uh, I find it just easier to press down. That way you have full control over your entire character. Double tap to sprint. If you want this on, like if you, you know, you're streaming or you're doing something else and you want to have this on so you can double tap and just have your guy run, do something real quick and then come back to the game. That's fine. But in the heat of the moment, I never use this. So I just turn it off. Incoming damage feedback. I used to keep this on 3D. Okay. But I found out it's a little bit easier to read in 2D and it's not so, you know, uh, congested on the HUD. So I leave this on 2D, although 3D, I believe, is the default. So you could just leave that there. It's not a big deal. I've never done both. I don't advise doing both. So uh, I keep mine on 2D. Taking damage uh, closes death box menu. This is something new that they added a very long time ago or back in season three. Uh, this is this I turn on. So if you've ever had issues where you're looting a box and somebody's shooting you and you forget to just jump out of the box, this automatically cancels you from looting. So it helps you out to evade or get away from your enemy shooting you. Uh, definitely turn that on. Streamer mode. This is for streamers. If you don't want people to know your name, I just have mine turned off. I want people to know when I kill them. <laughs> uh, usage usage, usage uh, sharing. I've had this on since I've been playing the game. Uh, hopefully EA. Uh, I'm not a big fan of EA, but <clears throat> hopefully it helps out with the data they've been gathering for this game to make it better. So uh, colorblind mode off, subtitles off. You don't need subtitles, anything to do with that. Now, onto controller, which is probably the biggest thing. 
uh, button layout I keep as default. For those that play Claw, you could do, um, if you don't have a scuff controller like I do, I have the scuff impact with four paddles on the back. Uh, you could do bumper jumper. I've always advised bumper jumper if you play Claw. Um, you could even do customize and mix stuff up if you really need to, but bumper jumper is probably the best one if you play Claw. Otherwise, default. Uh, stick layout is also default. Uh, tap interaction and reload. Tap to reload and use is just easier. It's just easier to do on both. So I've used that since the beginning of the game. If you want to use hold to use to like open a bin or use a crate, you can, although you're just going to lose a few milliseconds on that. Tapping is just much easier so you can concentrate on other things that are going on in the game. Crouch button I have on toggle. Now, uh, there you can still kind of bunny hop with this. Um, you used to be, they used to take bunny hopping away. It was gone and you had to have this on hold and then you could bunny hop, but I still have mine on toggle and you can bunny hop just a little bit. Not as much as you used to. So bunny hops back for those of you who like to do that. Aim button, always hold R2, L2 dead zones. I have that on default. If you have any issues with your controller, you can increase this to help with that. Um, mine are on default cause I have no issues when I pull down, it pops up. Uh, I have no issues with that menu cursor speed. This is going to be solely based on you. It's kind of like the sensitivity that we're about to get into. If you, you know, go loot a box and, you know, it's slow for you to go through the box or it's too fast for you to go into the box to find stuff, that's fine. You adjust this higher. The menu cursor speed is the faster you're going to go through the box when you flick your sticks to go through all of it. Now, with the most important items on the top with armor, ammo, um, most of the time in the heat of battle, you're going to be doing armor swapping. So, which I have a video to that. I'll have linked up below or above. Uh, mine is pretty set. The default, I think, is a little bit lower than this, but I have mine a little bit faster because you just want to slide through armor swap, maybe grab um, a little bit of ammo and then get out of the box. So, this is something you're going to have to play with. Um, unfortunately, it sucks because you can't go into the training round with a box and adjust this. So, you have to adjust this on the fly in game. So, uh, I would just advise playing a game where you're not worried about dying just to get this in the sweet spot. Now, sensitivity, probably the biggest issue when it comes to FPS, battle royale, shooters. Uh, this is so different for every single person. Uh, mine is very high look sensitivity with a the <clears throat> ADS sensitivity at default three. This has changed for me, I believe, three times since I've been playing Apex Legends and this new setup I have on 5.3 is mainly because I just got done playing on PC. So I used to keep this on 4.4. Okay, I originally played on 4.4, then I played on 5.5, and now I've dropped this down to 5.3. In my opinion, I like my look sensitivity, so when I'm not ADSing, to be able to move fast. So I can make fast adjustments, fast movements um, when I'm fighting somebody. Now, the trick about this is, depending on how you are, the higher this is, the harder it is to move it around when you're trying to hip fire, unless you're really good at centering your crosshairs and shooting the target. Otherwise, the faster this is or the higher this is, your, your crosshairs are going to go all over the place when you're trying to aim at a target. So getting the sweet spot for this is, especially if you hip fire a lot, which I do. I do it all the time, and I advise you guys to do the same. So five works for me. ADS three, default three. The default ADS is perfect, in my opinion. It doesn't need to be any higher unless <clears throat> you like to flick your controller, um, try to do some crazy, insane sniper shots. Um, but I find the default ADS sensitivity just perfect. I mean, I can adjust and and follow my target without any issues. I get You can get headshots with this, no problem. So again... A, the sensitivity, both ADS and look sensitivity is going to be mainly based on you. Now, I've I've never gone above, I believe, seven at one point. I've tried it, but this to me is just a sweet spot. Now, <clears throat> per optic settings, you can keep these or you can turn this on, and this is going to change it based on the sights that you're using. So from iron sights all the way up to the times 10. I used to have this enabled, but in the end, I found out I'm not really using anything above really the times three the times three optic is probably the sweet spot unless you pick up the craver um in which then you have to adjust down here but to me using any weapon with these sensitivities is perfect 
Um, I would say probably with the more like the scout or the longbow, <clears throat> the sentinel, those kind of things, you could probably turn this on and increase the optic, but it's only by optic. So I would just be careful of that. Get used to what you like. Now, I don't, again, I don't ever go above the times three optics. So I mainly just use the one time optics. I may use the times two for like the hemlock or <clears throat> a sniper maybe, but my defaults are just better. <clears throat> response curve okay classic this is the classic feel this is going to be closest to call of duty or any other fps that's out there um you can i used to play on steady uh it gave me a little bit more firm or a better it was a little bit tighter when it came to shooting somebody but then when you would pull to a you know left right up down it was just a little bit harder because it made it just a little bit more firm when it came to the ads so <clears throat> that was nice one trick I did do with this was is that I put steady on and then I was able to increase these settings, but I found out that the res the classic feel is just the exact same. So I'd rather just play on that. If you like the fine aim uh, with small adjustments, if you're kind of like an old controller player or mouse and keyboard player, this may work. But if you're really a mouse and keyboard, do linear. This is purely based on your controller. Every input you make is just raw. There's nothing different about it. If you pull all the way, there's going to be no response curve to it it's just gonna be a flat pull just like you were using a mouse so i keep mine on classic but this is something you can play around with in the training grounds and just find your classic or your best response curve look dead zone <clears throat> now me my controller drifts sometimes uh so what this means is that when you're sitting still and you're not touching your controller at all and your screen is just kind of going off to one side or the other that's your look dead zone which means that your controller is just doing that without you making it move when you're not touching your controller, you should just be looking straight or wherever your crosshair was at, and it shouldn't move at all. So for me, I should have this on small, but because I'm moving so much and moving my camera so much, I, I have it off. I'm rarely sitting still. But this is if you have an issue with your controller when it comes to that. Because if you are sitting still and you're kind of just waiting for something to happen or you're waiting for that good shot and you're just sitting there and it drifts off, it could mess you up in some way. I've never had an issue, but... You can adjust that based on your needs for look dead zone. Movement dead zone, same thing. As if your guy is kind of just drifting off. Keep that on small. You don't need it on large. If so, then I was just getting a new controller. Inverted look, you're weird as shit if you use this. Turn that off. Vibration off. You don't want to have vibration on during any of the uh, fast combat that happens in this game. Um, now on to advanced look controls. This is something that I had tried, especially on PC. Now, I'm not going to go through each of these settings, but what this means is that you're getting rid of your, your response curve and your optic settings and all that to fully customize it here, okay? So the yaw speed, the pitch speed, the extra yaw, this is all based on how you move your guy left, right, and up and down, okay? Dead zones represent the same thing, and the response curve represents the same response curve that we just went over. This is just more customizable. Um, I used to have this how it was and I turned yaw speed and pitch speed down and then you could turn all four of these off and then turn all of this down and off and leave these on and it, it was fun for a while but I still feel like the the natural input from the game that you have is just better so I would advise doing that but if you want to go in and play around with this you can all right on to video brightness is pretty it's a little bit higher than normal um, but that's just because some of the dark areas have died from somebody sitting there and just camping in the corner and we just didn't want that to happen again. So you could, you could adjust this, um, if you really wanted to, uh, you could probably just put it like right there and that's a really good spot. Field of view. If you're not on 110, put it to 110. The fact that apex legends is one of the few games where you can adjust the field of view for FPS shooter, especially on console adjust it you can see more you can see more of the screen you can see more enemies that are hiding put this up okay i used to play on 96 which was pretty solid but i turned it up to 110 110 don't just turn this up okay 110 sprint view shake uh when normal this is like when you're moving around your screen shakes a little bit when you're doing the slide jumping and all that turn this to minimal especially if you have any issues when it comes to like uh, motion sickness just turn this down Audio, you've changed, uh, uh, discard, yeah. 
So audio settings, master volume all the way up, sound effects all the way up. Dialogue, you can turn up to about 71. I have music on 76 because I like a little bit of music in between games. Lobby music, definitely down. It's too chaotic when you're trying to talk to your team. Uh, voice chat, off. Okay, inverting voice chat to text, off. Okay, you don't want to be trying to read some text of like Gibby calling out an ultimate and try to read it and mess up and get killed. Turn these off. You can hear it. That's what the dialogue volume is for. Just have that up just a little bit uh, and then you're good to go. Now you can play with these settings. Um, if you want to turn all these, these three all the way down, music, lobby music, and dialogue volume all the way to zero, you can. But sound effects and master volume, keep those at 100. Otherwise, you're good to go. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my Season 4 Apex Legends console pro settings. I hope this video has really helped you out. Again, I do stream every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on Twitch. The link is going to be down in the description below if you want to join us over there. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. That really does help me out. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications so you guys don't miss out on future Apex Legends tips. And for me, Warlug, as always, stay gaming, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.